Hello everyone, you're going to see today one of the primary reasons I truly wanted to get RetroArch updated. There's a nice little perk that's related to all the PC driven cores, such as DOSBox, PX68K, and of course the great MSX Konami computer. And we're going to start out with DOSBox here. And uh, one of the previous cores that I included did not work properly with the controls, but with the latest RetroArch versions that I've included, you're able to do what I'm going to show you today. We're going to go into uh, options here, well controls, and you look here, it's not so easy to map anything. It's not going to map what you need, but we're going to do something very unorthodox and unintuitive, and uh, I give personal thanks to FR500 for uh, pretty much going this route a few months ago when I first posted uh, information on it, because we want to be able to run the PC-driven cores on the NES Classic, and that's the NES Classic, and he integrated this into RetroArch itself and now you have this. So we're going to uh, keyboard. Yes, keyboard. Even though it's very unintuitive, we're doing the keyboard. Then we're going to back out, go right back in. And then uh, what we're going to do is we're going to see the ability to map any keyboard key to the controller. So right now I'm going uh, keyboard. Uh, I'm doing start. I'm making that the return key. I'm going to select and I'll make that the escape key and there's only going to be one single core of each PC type now with the latest RetroArch update before I had two one for USB host and one for non USB host but now there's just going to be one because with the latest RetroArch that I posted you could do it this way for all the PC cores so we're going to go through the rest of this process real quick of course we have to key bind the up down left and right up, down, left, right. And I'll show you how to save these controls after the fact too. Okay, we have those. Now we need uh you know the control and out for the action buttons we'll make that A for the left control and then we'll make it B for the left out and this is how I previously did it with the older DOSBox core until the core got broken with the updates we were doing but now everything's good to go again so we need left out now when you have all these controls set the way you'd like them to be set you're gonna go up and you're going to go to save core remap file. Then I'm going to load the remap file. Then I'm going to back out and I'm going to click save core override. Now when I exit and come back in, the controls sh should still be there. And I'm going to do that real quick and test this. Go into my controls. And we have all the keys there. We're good to go. I'm going to let this uh, game play and see if we're able to use the controller with the keyboard binded inputs here. And you're going to be able to do this on all the PC cores. You know, the CPC Amstrad, ZX Spectrum. You'll be able to do it on uh, the MXX core so you can play the Metal Gear 1 and 2 games, of course. Okay, let's see if this works. We're almost loaded here. And in the case of MSX, you're going to want to look up the, you know, the instruction manual for Metal Gear so you can have the proper controls, but I'll go over those too. Okay. So we have controls there. We're good to go. Okay, we're all set on that. Now we're going to open up the MSX core, and I'm going to do the exact same thing. We'll open up a Metal Gear, the Europe one, because it's in English. And I'm going to go to controls again. Now change it to retro keyboard. Back out. Go back in. And then you just want to map these controls. Um, For starters, uh... 
Let's see how the game runs without mapping and controls. I'm going to change it to a retro pad and just see what the default controls do for me right here. So when I originally tested this game on the NES Classic, I didn't realize they were missing controls until a few people pointed it out to me that they were unable to play it. But we're going to try to program in our punch button in and see if we can. So, as of right now, we basically want to go in to the controls and do what I was showing you. Change it to retro keyboard, back out, controls in. Now all the actual defined keys that are in the instruction manual for Metal Gear 1 and 2, you can program into here. So if you want to, uh, say, have F1, which would be pause, we could, uh, let's see what we want to do for that. We'll just make L2 pause for right now. And that would be the F1 key. And I paused it because I had it programmed. But I'm going to have a list of all the controls that you need for the manual for this game. And you can program them yourself. But I've tested this out. They work perfectly. But I'll have the, you know, the general controls for Metal Gear 1. And you just have to set the retro keyboard back out back in and program all these keys and you'll be able to run it with your controller whether it's not you know the SNES controller or the Wii Classic whatever controller you're using that is supported by the SNES Classic or NES Classic now of course uh, we're gonna do one more thing here I'll go to low core and we'll go to the sharp core And we could do the exact same thing on that one as well. So again, just remember, just change the controls to the keyboard. And then you could bind any keyboard key to it. And remember to save it as a remap file for that specific core when you're done. And then back out and save core override. Then you could exit and you'll have all the cores with their own specific controls. So have fun being able to play DOSBox. You do not have to wait for the update. I already posted this. Uh, in the last week, but I have it all fully fleshed out where you can do it this way and save the controls with no hassle. So have fun guys and gals.